So I'm proud to bring on stage three extraordinary women who I'm going to take a minute to introduce. Cindy Levy is the editor-in-chief of Glamour Magazine, and she is the mom of Ike and Lucy. And all three of these women did I, I, what I thought were beautiful posts about their children on the Global Mom Relay. But calls to action can be very tough. And Glamour Magazine, in every issue, has a call to action. And I really respect that. And I've grown to admire everyone at Glamour for lifting up the most important people, which are women and girls. With them will be Jennifer Lopez, known many to you as one of the greatest musicians of our time. She is co-founder co of the Lopez Family Foundation. She is mom of Max and Emmy. And with her is her sister, who we've grown to absolutely admire and love, Linda Lopez. She is a journalist, co-founder of the Lopez Family Foundation, and mom of Lucy. I've had the pleasure to get to know more about the Lopez Family Foundation, and they are really on the front lines supporting community health workers and women, and you'll hear a lot more about it now. So please join me in welcoming Cindy, Jennifer, and Linda. Hello. Hold on. Hi, guys. Hello. Um, thank you for being here. I am the luckiest person in the world to be able to sit down with this pair of power sisters <laughs> and you. talk about something that I think maybe you know a lot of people don't know about, which is the amazing work of the Lopez Family Foundation. But I want to talk first about one of the themes that was in both of the posts that you guys did for the Global Mom Relay and in so many of the other posts, which is that when you become a mother, you want to make the world a better place. Yeah. But better means different things to different people. So tell me, what does better mean to you? What is the world that you want to leave to Lucy and to Max and Emmy? I don't know. I feel like moms, uh, our biggest kind of job is to, to teach our children, right? It's, it's to teach them by example how we live, what we do, and I honestly feel like I want to teach my children to always come from a place of love. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, it's my message and my music as well. It's my message kind of universally through everything that I do. And because I just feel like when we come from that place, a place of love, of caring, of helping others, of, of knowing that you, you can do something, even if it's a small thing. Um, when I think back to even to my own mom, I think of a, a story where we, and it's a silly, it's, it's actually not silly, but we, we were home one day in the Bronx and she was cooking and we had food on the table, you know, you know, food and we were about to eat and some people came over and I was like, mom, we're not gonna have enough food, you know? And she was like, there's always enough food. Never be afraid to give away food. We can split it. We can, and, and that just so stayed with me. Yeah. You know, it gave me kind of a sense of like how you should be in this world. And I just think that that's our, my goal with my children and what I want them to think about and how I want them to be. And, and what about you, Linda? You know, I think about just the moment that Lucy came. We both have a Lucy, so it, <laughs> if it sounds weird, that's why. Um, I remember the, the moment in the hospital when Lucy was born and you get to sit there and you get to hold her. And I, for some reason, at that moment, had the thought, I, I wrote about this a little in the blog post, that I was some, experiencing something that pretty much every other woman was going to experience, something like 89% of women worldwide will have a baby, will have a child. Mm -hmm. And so that feeling that I was having right then and everything that was happening, I just felt this camaraderie and just this sort of, you know, this global like motherhood with everyone who was doing that and everything that felt great about that in that moment and the way I felt supported and the way I felt like the love and that things would be okay and I had great people around me to help me, that was sort of my moment to feel, you know what, if I can help someone who might not have this have this or get a little more of that when they have their baby, then that's that's just kind of how I wanted to do it. Well, you guys were obviously raised by a pretty incredible mother. You're both really close to her, Lupe. your mom, Lupe. Lupe. <laughs> so, so talk about what she taught you. I mean, if mothers really are the global teachers, right. what did she teach you? She taught me mostly, um, and I'm sure Linda had similar but different experience as everyone does, but for me it was really to be independent. 
to know that I could accomplish anything, that it didn't matter if I, you know, I was a girl, mm -hmm. you know, because my mom had three girls. And so her thing was kind of to empower us, to make us know that we could accomplish anything. Nobody had to take care of us. We could take care of ourselves. And if we wanted to be the president of the United States, we could do that. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever we wanted to do. And she was very encouraging. And I think about that now. My mom was 20 years old when she got married and had my sister 11 months later. And my first sister, Leslie, who's not here with us today, um, who's a working mom. Mm -hmm. And uh, all moms are. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Redundant. Sorry. That's right. Um, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, that she was. That, that your mom was working and working, Leslie. And she had Leslie when she was 20. <laughs> And that it was amazing to you because you guys are good. At she was this, very by independent. The way. She was very independent, and it's amazing to think of because she started. Oh, so it was young. just it, it was because she started we very young. Because she started very young, and I think of that now, and I think, wow, to to have that, it's 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 an instinct. Yeah. You know what I mean? She had an instinct um, because she was 20 years old, grow, grew up in the Bronx, didn't go to college. You know what I mean? And and here she was, a strong woman in this time where. Moms all, mostly stayed at home, mm -hmm. you know, and she was so preparing us for this future. And I think of what I went on to do and what Linda went on to do and what we're doing now. And I think, wow, Lupe did an amazing job. Yeah. I mean, if I follow all of those yeah. tips, will my daughter be on <laughs> the stage? I'm hoping my someday? daughter does. She's the one you should yeah. be talking to. You should be yeah. talking yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. And, and Linda, does that jive with your experience? Yeah. I just, my mom, my whole life made me feel like I was very smart whether it was true or not. Well, you, know, you were she made labeled us feel the smart one. But I mean, she made you feel... <laughs> I was the athletic one, by the way, just so you know. And the beautiful and the talented one, but... No, you were the smart. pretty That's one, good. too. She smart. was the pretty smart one. I was like the tomboy, uh, really? athletic one. Yeah, yeah. Wow. By, by the way, I embraced that. Uh -huh. I embraced that. That was fine with me. Awesome. It made me yeah. feel very strong and powerful. Yeah, too. that's what Lupe did. She made Jennifer feel like she could go to the Olympics and win 20 gold medals. She yeah. made me feel like I could be president of the United States. She just had that, for, as Jen said, for someone who was 20 years old, who didn't go to college, who didn't have a sort of base in the world to push us to the highest heights, she still wanted did. to push us and yeah. did push us to the highest <laughs> yeah. heights. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the Lopez Family Foundation because for those who don't know, it's really impressive. Um, over the last four years, the foundation has opened nine centers, I think, in Puerto Rico and, and Panama, Panama yeah. um, all focused on telemedicine. So right. tell us how this started. It started, uh, Linda and I were both pregnant at the same time. I, I was six months pregnant, and then Linda came over one day and Don't was like, I'm story. tired. And I was like, how tired are you? <laughs> and she said, I'm really tired. And I was like, like more tired than you've ever been? Like you want to nap all the time? And she was like, yeah, and I, I don't know. And she said something else, and I was like, you're pregnant! <laughs> and she was like, no, I'm not! And then I was like, ran down, waddled downstairs more like it, and got her a test, and, and she was. <laughs> I told you don't tell that story. Yeah. Come on. Um, I literally Jennifer had to convince me to to even take the test and right. And make sure but it long story short, we were both pregnant at the same time, and we we had always talked about doing charity work together since I came into the public eye, and Linda was in radio and on TV, and we were thinking, you know, what can we do? What can we do? But once we got pregnant, that went into like hyperdrive for us because again, becoming a mom changes your life, changes your perspective on the world, makes you want to have this great world for this being that already exists in your mm -hmm. mind. And, uh, and, and that's how we, we started it. There was sort of this realization too that, you know, if you're not gonna solve the whole world's problems and you can't do something really, really big, you know, a lot of people maybe don't wanna do anything. And, but what yeah. can you do is the question. I remember thinking, like I said, when I had that moment holding Lucy, if I could give someone a little of this, that would make me happy. If I could make one person have that change. And that how did you get specifically to telemedicine and to the healthcare advocacy well, that you did? We started do? doing some investigating and asking. I had worked with the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles at that point for about six years with their charity and, and kind of became very involved with that. And I said, what does the world need? Like really, in, in terms of children and women and healthcare and education, which I felt was important to me and and they said 
you know, telemedicine. Telemedicine is a big thing that we love to kind of put throughout the world. And I was like, we can do that. <laughs> um, that was literally our response. That. We can do I that. Mean, <laughs> you know me, big, big goals. Right. So I was like, you know what? So we started learning more about telemedicine and realizing that this was something that doctors uh, would love to have. And, and it's basically a technology where doctors can communicate with each other and they can diagnose and you can get in touch with specialists through through technology and, and we started, you know, very, I always say one step at a time, which is kind of the theme for our Lopez Family Foundation. It's a song that I wrote when the babies were three years old and became kind of our theme song. And little one step at a time, we're just trying to, to put those telemedicine centers out there. Mm -hmm. So basically we have doctors at the Children's Hospital in Los Angeles who have a, it's kind of like a satellite hookup. It's a, tech, a technological hookup to other places in the world. In Puerto Rico, in Panama, they're able to, um, examine, diagnose, treat different patients um, who have different, who need different specialty care throughout the world. And you had an experience that you wrote about in your blog post when you were in Panama of meeting a mom who had a child basically the same age as Lucy. Can you talk about that? Yeah, when Lucy was about two years old, um, we went down to Panama, myself and some of the doctors who do the work at our foundation, and went to visit the rural way out in the rural areas, in the mountainous areas where the indigenous people live in Panama, they have a hard time getting access to health care. So we went to visit a couple of clinics or what, you know, the equivalent of what they had for their medical care. And it was basically these one and two room shacks. Some don't have electricity, some don't have plumbing, some don't have, you know, any of the real things that you would need. And they have a doctor that comes from a larger city to visit one or two days a week, a couple of hours a day. When we pulled up to our, Next to last one of the day, there was a mom sitting out front with two little girls who, you know, needed a doctor's visit. And I just sat down next to her. I don't know why. I decided to start talking to her. And she was telling me that her older daughter had a cold, but her younger daughter, who was two years old, had a really bad cough. And it had gotten so bad over the past couple of days that she was worried it might be something serious. But the doctor who was there at the clinic that day was done with his hours. He was with patients, and he had been packed the whole day. And so she had walked... You have to walk for hours if you, don't, if you can't get to a bus route or something like that. The, the people have to walk for hours to get to some kind of clinic or care. So she had made the trip. She was scared that the doctor was going to leave. Her daughters weren't going to get to see a, a doctor that day, and she didn't know what she was going to do if over the next few days before he came back, her, doc, her daughter ended up being seriously ill. And, and I said this in the blog post. I had never had such a powerful feeling, a feeling connected to another mother to another person because it is so easy for any of us who have a child to, to know that feeling of when they're sick, you're helpless, what can you do? You need help, you need support. And so I had a little freak out and I got our doctors from the foundation and I was like, we have to help her and we have to stay here. But it was kind of just the moment that made me realize these are the little things that, you know, if we don't solve the world's problems with our foundation, these are the things that we really hope to just make little changes with right. and a little difference with. You were talking about how with the foundation it's been one step at a time. What might the next step be? Would there be clinics here domestically? Is there anything that we're you hoping, guys have on your wish list? You know, we're hoping to have the whole world <laughs> one day is really the goal. And we have doctors who can offer different kind of specialty care so that if people don't have doctors in indigenous areas of Panama or in the rural areas of Puerto Rico who know how to treat children who are seriously ill, we're offering that service and that doctor's care to them. And so the goal is to increase that, get even more physicians, yeah, even and more specialists, and to do the that. the research to find out what areas need it the most and mm -hmm. kind of we try to target there. And, uh, and like I said, little by little kind of find, okay, this is the next place we're going to do, and then that takes time to get up and running and set up and everything. Right. But, you know, like I said, we're, we're working on it every day. Right. Now, one of the themes that I think you're talking about is this connection between moms. And, Jennifer, I remember when you won a Glamour Woman of the Year Award two years ago, on stage you said something really powerful to all the young girls who are in the audience. You said, you know, your girls, the women in your life, are the ones who are always <laughs> going to be there for you. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I get this sense that both of you really believe that women's job is to rally behind one another. Well, women are so powerful when we get together, mm -hmm. I feel like. I feel like we have such a passion and an understanding of what is important in life at a base level, which is kind of love and nurturing and caring for one another, and that that needs to be in line before every other problem in the world is solved. 
And, uh, and, and yes, when I, I gave that speech, it was Women of the Year, and I just I couldn't help thinking about women and the women in my life. And I had just gone through a very difficult time at that time with a divorce and you know with the kids and everything, and it was, it was very difficult to me. And all I could remember was all the women around me, my mom, my sisters, my friends, you know, just there holding you, you know, taking shifts almost, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like just yeah. being there for you and how important and how powerful that was for me at that time. Um, and how no matter what, you know, who came in and out of my life, these people were always there for me and always supportive of me. I've had the same girlfriends for, I don't know, years and years and years, even the women that work with me for years and years and years, my sisters, my mom, you know, my cousins, my aunts, all of them, you know, and it was just, it just really occurred to me that, you know, how powerful that is and how real that is and how much we need it more than, you know, sometimes that even relationships in our lives that are, of course, important and, and valuable and fulfilling, but there's just something very special about your girls. Yeah, they're going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that with your mom growing up, that she had a circle of women around her who supported her? Well, she had her, you know, my mom also had three sisters. Mm -hmm. So me, me and Le Linda and Leslie, three sisters. Um, and then my aunt has three girls. So it was a lot of girls. It was a matriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of girls. <laughs> Uh, but definitely, and my mom always had like her best girlfriends, and they were always over, and the men were always like in the other place playing dominoes or doing whatever, and <laughs> you know they were always in the kitchen and talking, and you know, and it, it, not that it was stereotypical at all. The women were very strong, you mm -hmm. know, um, but but for sure, my mom uh, set that example of like you know this this is a great core for you, mm -hmm. you know? Right. It's almost how you learn to be women, all the women who are around and talking with your mom and sort of... And watching. And yeah, you watching them be themselves and be social, you know, with each other. Right. It was kind of your lesson. So before we close, you know, we're here all day today talking about global motherhood. So what do you think is the most important thing that citizens can do to support moms globally? You know, if you had to say one thing, what would it be? Me? <laughs> I'll call on you if need be. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Our mom was a teacher, too. Don't do that. Um, I think, you know, probably the thing that you can do is be a great example to your children. Just be, you know, concentrate, be mindful of sort of raising up the children who are going to take the love forward in the world, who are going to want to do things to make it the world that we are we are all here today looking to hope that we can build and that we can change just be the person who shows them that that's so possible also just initiatives like this you know the whole you know global mom relay coming together using our power using our voice um you know the un every woman every child you know and and, and wanting them to have healthier lives, even just putting that out in the atmosphere, that when we do do things like this, that all women support it, that you really do get involved, that you take your time, you go on the blogs, you find out what's happening. It's all about awareness, it's all about education all the time, and it's all about you know doing something. You know, Pick up your, your finger and, and press the button and donate and do your, do your part. You know? And I feel like in that way, supporting each other, that support comes back to you and it becomes this kind of beautiful cycle of, 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 of great energy and, and great things happening. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, did you know what we actually did on that day? You know, yeah, it took a lot to pull an event like this together. You know, we're talking about the last 60 or 90 days or six months that it took mm -hmm. to kind of just even put this day together. And uh, at the end of, you know, at the end of the day, you'll be hearing about everything that was accomplished and you were part of it. We were part of it. I feel proud of things like that, and I feel like that's how we support each other. Well, congratulations on everything you. that you're doing. And for those of you who are watching this on the live stream or in our audience, you can tweet your answer. Um, what do you think that we can do to support moms globally with the hashtag GlobalMom? Thank you, Linda Thank you, and Jennifer Lopez. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Guys. Thank you.